Hi everyone, Aiden here at The Trailer. Today we're going to be taking a look at and showing you how to install this Back Revolver X4S roll-up hard tonneau cover on our 2023 Chevrolet Silverado 1500. This is going to be a really solid option for a tonneau cover. Hard covers are great because they offer better security than most soft covers. You've got quarter inch thick aluminum panels underneath here to create a nice hard barrier between all of your stuff inside and the outside world. Not only is everything hidden, but if someone were to try to take a knife or something to this, they wouldn't be getting through those panels compared to something like a soft cover where you could easily cut it open and get inside. But on the top, you don't have the look of aluminum panels. It's a nice matte black vinyl material, which has kind of the look of a soft tonneau cover, very clean, no seams really, and very low profile. So I think it kind of combines the best of both worlds in terms of aesthetics, but also security and function. Working in combination with the locking tailgate here, it's gonna give you maximum protection. Now obviously nothing is thief proof, but this is going to be the biggest theft deterrent you can probably get for your truck. Opening up the tailgate reveals the inside where we can access the release cord. That's gonna be on either side underneath. You can pull from either end to release those latches and start to roll the whole cover up. And as we're rolling this up, I wanna talk about some of the benefits of this style. When you're looking at hard tonneau covers, you're gonna probably have three main options. Your trifold panels, your retractable canister style, and this. Now, obviously this rolls up into a roll up at the top against the cab of your truck. The trifold panel style, those are gonna fold in three different sections. So they're very quick and easy to roll up or fold up and fold out. You've got multiple locking points throughout, but if you wanna fold it up fully for full access to the bed of your truck, you're gonna have it vertical up here blocking the entire rear window. That's not ideal obviously for visibility when we're driving down the road and not everyone wants that. With this, if you want that full access to your bed, it isn't going to block everything. It sits well below the headrests on the back seat here, leaving us enough room to still see out the back window. Comparing this to a canister style, the canister is going to retract into a box that sits in your bed, leaving this box in your bed. So if you need to utilize this space here, you can't with a canister style. It is very clean because nothing sits above the bed rails besides the side rails just a little bit, but the cover itself sits down below. With this, again, if you want that full bed access, you've got it because none of this sits down below the bed rails. When it is rolled up, you need to secure that roll using the straps that go over the whole assembly into this catch plate on your tonneau cover, sliding in, twisting, and pulling the strap tight on both sides. So it is a little bit more manual because you have to go to both sides and put the strap over. Whereas something like a canister style, all you have to do is roll it up into the canister. There's no tying up any straps or anything like that a little bit more automatic and quick to do. The other thing I don't love as much about the style is that you only have two options. It's either fully open or fully closed. You can't stop at any point in between here because you need the cover to fully roll out and hit this lever at the end here to latch in and close up all the hooks along the tonneau cover. You can see this plate that'll come over and hook in. It runs down the entire side rail and in order to activate it, it needs to be fully unrolled. So with something like a canister, typically with those, you can stop them really at any point. So if you have a load maybe partially extending the bed of your truck, maybe some lumber or a ladder leaning up against your tailgate here, you can close the tonneau cover right up to the point where that cargo is going to be sticking out, still giving you some fuel economy benefits, but not needing to fully open or fully close it. But one of the big wins I think that the back revolver has and this style in general has is how easy it is to remove. It's held in place to the side rails using some hand knobs and bolts that pop down through the plates in the side rails. So if you wanna get this whole roll removed, all you gotta do is undo the hand knobs, lift it out, and it'll leave the side rails here clamped in place behind, and you can just drop it back in whenever you're ready to use it again. So you do, if you do have something in your bed, maybe like a fifth wheel or a gooseneck, and you wanna hook up a camper and not have this roll in your way, limiting your clearance for certain things, you can easily take it out. Whereas with a canister style, that is really not meant to be taken out because that whole assembly installs and just kind of stays in place. As we unroll this, we can check out all the different points of weather sealing to keep water out. 
at the front end here by the cab, you'll notice that this rubber seal is kind of curved up and that's just because we just got it out of the box. When this sits out in the sun and has some time to form, it'll start laying flat, but there is also another seal that we'll install during the install process underneath there to help keep water out. I just maybe watch out on the corner parts here because depending on how well you fit this up in your install process, you might have some spots where water could maybe get in and it really just depends on things like your bed liner and how well everything can adhere. So you may need some supplemental sealant just to kind of get these corners secured, but there's no drain tubes or anything required with a tonneau cover like this. And so long as those weather seals lay flat, I think it'll be really nice. Along the side, you've also got weather seals. And as we roll it out, there's going to be another seal out by the tailgate right here that our tailgate will sit up against to keep water out at the end. This cover can support a little bit of weight. So if you need to maybe set something up because your hands are full to open your tailgate, it can support 400 pounds evenly distributed across the cover. So if you've got something like camping gear or maybe a toolbox that you need to set down for a second, you can do that and rest it on the cover without any worry about it bowing in or getting damaged. One other thing I found pretty notable about this install is that the side rails don't extend over the bed rails very far, leaving our stake pockets fully exposed and open. So if we did have maybe some extra accessories that we already have or wanted to get down the road, we don't have to worry about any clearance issues there. Speaking of the installation process though, this one is going to be very straightforward. All you really have to do is clamp on the side rails, set the cover in place, and get those hand knobs tightened down. We'll walk through that process with you right now. The first step of the installation process is to install the bulkhead seal. Your kit is going to come with two different seals depending on the type of bed liner or lack of bed liner that you have. The smaller of the two is going to be used for drop-in bed liners and everything else will be the larger, thicker foam seal. Now, one thing I will say with a spray-in bed liner like this is it's hard to adhere to. So additional adhesive may be needed or maybe an additional sealant, particularly around the corners here. We'll probably show that during the install process once the tunnel covers in place because more often than not, this type of seal and adhesive backing doesn't work super well on that type of material. But regardless, we're going to get it installed and lay it down evenly across the bulkhead, working our way down slowly and trimming off any excess that we need to. So peel the backing off, set it in place right up to the edge of the bed rail and start working our way down the line, pressing firmly to try to hold it in place. And I'm going to be pretty careful with my trimming here because I don't want anything left out. If anything, I'd like a little bit of excess because it's mostly foam and I can compress it a little bit to get a perfect fit. I'm just gonna hold down these edges firmly for just a little bit extra to make sure that the adhesive starts to grab on. The side rails are gonna go in place on the bed rails. And you can tell which side is which by either looking for a sticker at the very end, which will say R or L, R for passenger, L for driver's side. But you can also look at just how it's all laid out. There's a large flat section that's gonna be on the outside edge for the bed rail. And up by me, there's gonna be two long slotted holes that will go against the bulkhead of the bed. So that's going to be towards the front of our truck, set it in place on the bed rail and push it forward as far as it'll go. We can then take our clamps and put them up into place. The tops of the clamps are gonna have grooved teeth and the nut will be on the inside of the bed where we can access it. I'm gonna start off in the middle right here. And these don't have exact spacings just one for the middle, one for the rear, and one for the front. Could help to have an extra set of hands here to hold the rail in place, but it is doable on your own. Start to get that tightened down, make sure it's pushed up as far as it'll go, and apply some pressure on the side rail to make sure it's sitting flush with the bed rail. Repeat that for the front and the back. With all of the clamps in place, this is what it looks like. The front 
and the rear clamps are pretty much just as far front and back as they can go and what fits with our bed. And one tip with those, once you've got this middle clamp in place, it's a lot easier to have one hand on the bed rail because you're not trying to hold it up in place and then one on the clamp. So you can put a lot of downward pressure with one hand on the end of the side rail while you tighten. And once you get the front and back done, I actually went back to the middle one here, loosened it up a bit and put that same sort of downward pressure while I tightened it. And I could actually see the weather strip on the outside flatten out a bit, resulting in a tighter seal. This has been done on both sides. Let's go ahead and take off the stickers from the side rails you have and maybe clean off any adhesive residue left behind. And before we continue, I want to check to make sure we have clearance with our tailgate. And although it's close, there's no contact being made and it's a nice tight fit. With the installation of the side rails fully complete and tightened down, we can take our whole tunnel cover assembly and set it on the tailgate. Look for the white latch right here. That's going to be the rear or the tailgate side of the tunnel cover. And we want to set that end down first and roll it towards the cab. Before that, obviously you want to make sure you get all these packing materials removed, just the plastic that's getting all of this bound up. And depending on your comfort level, lifting this on your own, you might want to grab an extra set of hands, but if you can, you can grab it by both ends and from inside the bed, actually lift it into place, which we'll show you in a second. This is going to be a little bit heavy, but overall quite manageable. And we're just going to set it on the rails roughly in place between each side. And again, this back end will kind of loosely drape over. I'm gonna actually step to the other side and roll it to the front. As we roll this towards the front of our truck, we can eventually get this cardboard packing material out. And when we reach the front, we're going to see two channels on the underside of the tunnel cover. Your kit's gonna come with four of these bolts that slide into those channels, two for each side. So one for that channel, one for this one, and those threads will line up with the slotted holes on these brackets for the side rails that we saw earlier. Once you've got those installed on both rails on both sides, you can get them lined up to these slotted holes and drop them down through. You may recall that by the tailgate here, we purposely left things loose. That's because we can make adjustments back and forth, but when everything is rolled out, sitting nice and flat, I'm actually going to press this down in, and those white latches that we used to determine what side was which are going to click into place underneath. And these ones actually clicked in really smoothly, which is great. It means things are aligning really well. And I'm going to check with clearance for our tailgate and also check to see if the tunnel cover is sitting flush with the end of the side rails. You can see this is looking pretty good right here. Maybe could come back just a little bit. Right about there is looking good. And the other side from what I can tell from here looks good too. At this point, I'm gonna open up the tailgate. I'm going to pull the release lever from underneath and actually roll this up carefully towards the front, trying not to shift things so that I can access those bolts and the threads of those bolts underneath the tunnel cover. Once we get under there, it's probably gonna be hard to see on camera, but we're gonna have three main pieces, our rubber washer, our metal washer, and our hand knobs. Each bolt will get this combination of hardware in this order, coming from underneath to screw this into the plate. I'm just gonna go on the threads here, just repeat that for all of our hardware, once you're happy with how tight these hand knobs are, repeat it on the other side. And now we can go and do some further testing to make sure everything rolls out smoothly. All of these hooks here are laying in the channels perfectly fine. And as we get to the end of the tunnel cover, this is the thing I'm looking for most, a smooth closed shut. And we're getting a little bit of sticking on this right side here, which means we may need to shift things a little bit. And it's kind of skewed because this takes a little too much pressure to close shut properly. So I'm gonna roll this back up. And all I really did for adjustment was roll it back up and just push the whole roll that way a little bit. Coming back out, you can see we're getting a much smoother fit. Now the other side also clicks in very smoothly. If you're pushing it just from one corner, you may need to just go move your hand and push it from the middle 
to also latch that side, but you'll get good results if you're latching it from the middle right here. You can see it took very little effort and no clearance issues with our tailgate to be seen. So I'd say we can go back through and fully tighten down the hand knobs. One of the final things we need to do is install these straps with the little keeper tabs on the end. This will secure and hold the rolled up tonneau cover in place whenever we have it open. And the clamp just goes onto the side rails, just like our other clamps did. I'm gonna install it directly next to the frontmost clamp as close as I can get it. We'll start off tightening it by hand and come back through with the same 916 socket or wrench that we used before and tighten that down too. Once both sides are installed, these will feed up and over the roll, feed into these plates that are pre-installed right here and tighten down to secure the roll in place. One extra layer of protection we can add though is going to be these rubber pads to the underside or these slats of the tonneau cover. And right now, we're not really coming too close to the cab of our truck, but I'm going to put them probably right here at the closest point. So if things were to shift and move, then we're gonna have a little bit of protection there and probably on the slat above that. You get four of these rubber pads in total. So once you've identified the slats you wanna install them on, I'm gonna basically do one here and here, just a little bit off from the center, and then some maybe a little bit offset from those on the other slat. After all that's done, your installation process is complete. Overall, it's a very straightforward process. As far as tunnel covers go, and especially the hard tunnel covers, this one is probably one of the easiest installation processes you can go with. And the finished product that you're left with is something very out of the way and unobtrusive in your truck bed, and also low profile. It's a great combination of both looks and function. And I think it's gonna be a really solid fit on your 2023 Chevrolet Silverado 1500. Thanks for watching.